This week, we meet some people taking on their own special travel challenges. Man, you look hench, man. Yeah. <laughs> working out. I'm in the USA to catch up with competitors taking part in a unique international championship. We find out how this woman plans to take her wheelchair into the skies. And we join the blind backpacker on a mission to visit every country in the world. I travel alone because it's the biggest challenge I can get. We start in Washington, D.C. This place claims to be one of the most accessible cities in the world, which makes it a great place to start our special programme, marking International Disability Day. How you doing, brother? It's an annual drive to raise awareness about the issues faced by disabled people across the globe. I have never let using a wheelchair hold me back in my sporting career or my TV career, but there is no doubt travelling can be daunting. Even the Great Lincoln Memorial has its issues. The lift's been vandalised. You can go on a virtual tour. Not quite sure what the great Abraham Lincoln would have made of it, though. This week, we'll meet travellers who refuse to be restricted by their physical disabilities. First, I'm heading half an hour north to the University of Maryland, where a yearly sports event has drawn disabled competitors and spectators from all over the world. The Working Wounded Games has adaptive athletes compete across a range of bodybuilding and weightlifting challenges. Wesley Hamilton has been working out for just over two years. This is his first time competing at the Games. I travel pretty far. I stay in Kansas City, Missouri, uh -huh. Midwest. It's about a three hour flight. Wesley ended up in a wheelchair after a life changing incident. So January 2012, I was shot multiple times which caused me to have a spinal cord injury. It was traumatic because it was actually a stranger that shot me. I was walking back to my car. It put me in a place of depression, and at that time, I was 230 pounds. Wow. So I went through a lot. Tell me how you found out about this. Um, social media, man. I was just going on YouTube one day, and I seen a Working Wounded Games video from maybe 2015, and. I was emotional because being in a wheelchair, working out, I thought I was the only one, you know, and it gave me a community. Best of luck. You ready? I'm ready. Man, you look hench, man. Yeah. He's been working <laughs> out <laughs> all the time, man. Final photo for volunteers. Volunteers, get in up this way. Most para sports categorize by ability, but the working wounded games are different. By modifying the rules for each individual athlete, they encourage people with a range of capabilities to compete together. It's called the Working Wounded Games. Right. So who is allowed to compete in these games? Anybody that has some sort of uh, permanent adaptive need that affects them physically. So you're really inclusive and open to everybody? Yes, we, we actually really get excited when we have first-time athletes, yeah. first-time competitors. This is the calm before the storm. Everyone's all chilled out, but then the madness begins when they start competing. You did some extra reps there. I did do extra reps. Are you, are you just trying to show off? It, it, he's saying it's trying to show off. He's saying it's too easy now. <laughs> Since sports people of all abilities take part, Wesley challenges me to a light workout. 
I've got to use that skiing machine, burn up calories. Then I've got to tow this sled and I've got a kettlebell that I've got to lift up and down. And I've got to keep doing that for 12 minutes. It's going to be sheer hell. Where's Lee? You know what time it is, brother. I'm going to give you a travel show whooping. That's hard. <laughs> really hard. Oh. I see that sweat, bro. That's what you need. Right on. <laughs> Have they unstrapped me? Right, it's your turn. Do some work. This is the first year the Games have introduced a separate bracket for their elite Spartan athletes. And one 18-year-old competitor is gathering a lot of attention. So tell me what you were trying to do. Me and my coach are trying to figure out a way to take uh, pull-ups because I'm not able to do it yet. And it's mainly because of your, your right hand, yeah. yeah. There's no strength in it. There's so, no strength. Uh, and when I was born, all my nerves just, um, yeah, they just got teared up. Nora has traveled here from Norway. It's her first time in the United States. And just getting here has proved the challenge. It was really hard to scan my fingerprints when coming to the US. See, you don't think about that. I don't think, because they're, um, they're, they're pretty stringent and strict, aren't they? Four fingers, two yeah. thumbs. So, so what did you do? I had to turn all around and I had to take... I, I stood there for 15 minutes because it's... they couldn't scan it. Nora has never been able to complete a pull-up. Unless she can now figure out a way, she'll finish last in this round. This is going to be a real challenge for her, physically and mentally. So there's another lady next to Nora. She's got an arm impairment and she can do the one-arm pull-ups. And she's been like mentoring Nora and giving her advice. That's what I love about this place, the real community atmosphere. Go, 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 go! Yeah! Two in a row! How many is she done? I'm having a scanner that where her hand is. So 10. For the first time in her life, she manages not just one pull up, but 22. There's no let up though, it's then on to the rest of the workout. You were crying, you had tears, your coach was hugging you. Um, tell me about the emotion. What, what, why, why were you so emotional? It's OK, take your time. Oh, I worked so hard. So it's amazing when you get that back after working your ass off for like two months, not being able. So it was just a huge step for me. Yeah. Was that the first time you've been able to do pull-ups? Yeah. I haven't been close. It's Norwegian power. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Cheered on by a crowd of international spectators, the competitors push the limits of their capabilities. Every clap. He weighs a ton. <laughs> so next up is our seated category. We only had males competing this year. And our first place winner is Wes. Woo! Yeah! Bra, 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 bra. <laughs> yeah! In second place.
worth coming all the way from Norway. Yeah. yeah. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. 21 pull-ups. I expect 22 yeah. next time. <laughs> This event is about more than just physical exercise and pumping iron. It's empowering people with impairments and it's also showing that you don't have to be an elite Paralympian to compete and do great things in sport. These people now have a community, a sense of belonging and for some of them it's become a life-changing event. Next up, you might remember this beautiful piece of performance art commissioned as part of London's Cultural Olympiad back in 2012. Well, now the artist Sue Austin is setting her sights on what could be another world first. We travel to her home in Devon in the UK to meet her. The artwork is all about communicating the fact that a wheelchair is my freedom. Access is at the heart, that's the reason for making the artwork. So following on from the underwater wheelchair, the natural extension was to think how I could create even more unexpected imagery. It's still a little bit under wraps in terms of the actual physicality, but I'm actually going on a journey to find out if I can fly. The flight training in France was the hardest thing I have ever chosen to do. My instructor from day three was thinking that I wouldn't be able to manage. I knew I had um, motor coordination issues, but I hadn't realised that those neurological issues affected my hands and my perception as well. I think my hands are straight, but they're actually like this, and that's pretty cr critical. There's, there's ways around it. You just learn and train your brain. Now, I can't imagine how I didn't know that. You know, we find barriers, whether they're physical ones within me, or um, attitudes about the right way to fly, and then we find ways to negotiate around those. And I really think that is hopefully a parallel with travel and accessibility as well. You know, that's organisations just need to think outside the box and they can open up their venues and their environment. I really hope that I'll be flying a wheelchair by next summer, if not before. The travel show, <laughs> your essential guide to wherever you're headed. It's always good to have a buddy. Finally, this week, we head to Israel to meet a man who's clocked up more than 120 countries on his travels. But what's even more remarkable is that he's done all of this without being able to see. To find out how he experiences the world, we caught up with him in a city known for being both holy and hectic, Jerusalem. I see a place through my senses. I see a place by the sounds, by the smells, by the textures. The hustle and bustle, people shouting, buy this, buy this, come and look at this. I feel the atmosphere, I feel the energy, the buzz. My name is Tony Giles, I'm from England. I'm totally blind and severely deaf in both ears and I'm travelling around the world trying to visit every country. We're in the old city. Israel is country 124. So I was born with my eye condition, so I don't have any vision apart from sunlight sensitivity, and I have gradually gone deaf as I got older. I'm now 80% or severely deaf in both ears, but I use digital hearing aids. I travel alone because it's the biggest challenge I can get. And traveling by myself, excuse me, I get to interact with more people. If I travel with someone, particularly someone sighted, they'd be doing all the work, they'd be doing all the guiding, and I wouldn't get to touch 
as many things and find as many things as I do by myself. Today I'm going to catch a bus into the old city to um, go to the Western Wall. Western Wall? Western Wall, yeah. Okay, let's need go. To a, need to get a bus. I will help you. Okay. Let me hold your arm like that. Yeah, where are you from? I'm from England. Huh? England. England. I was lucky that the bus driver was sort of nearby waiting, so it was, it was really easy to find the bus. Uh, yeah, I got it. Uh, let go, let go. New Orleans was the first place I went to by myself. I was in a foreign city by myself. I didn't know where I was going, I was blind, and I just froze. And then I took a couple of deep breaths and said to myself, Tony, this is what you want. If you don't want it, go home. Well, more deep breaths, turn left, walk down the street, and the rest is history. Excuse me, are you hearing me? This is your stop station. My stop? Yes, okay. you can take off. All right, thank you. You want any help? I'm good. Just trying to get my bearings, trying to work out which way the traffic's going, and if I can use it as sunlight. I can't sense any sun at all. You have to be patient. You get you get lost all the time. It's very difficult if you're looking for something specific when you can't see, because obviously you can't pinpoint it. Excuse me, you might get 10 people walk past and then someone will stop, oh, you lost or you do need help, and then you can interact with them. That's how it works. Where do you want to go? Excuse me, is this the uh, Damascus Gate? Yeah. This way, yeah? Straight in front of me? No? no, no. no? OK. Come, want to help? Yeah. Oh, I like this. I like the atmosphere and the smells, and it's, it's all close and compact. Very feel authentic. <laughs> I'm going to the Western Wall and on the way I'm going to hopefully explore some of the Via della Rosa, which is the stages of the cross that Jesus walked. Morning. Morning. How are you? Good, good. How are you? You want to see my shop souvenir? Oh, no, uh, yeah, I can have a brief look. Yes? Yeah, why not? Come. What do you sell? Yeah. Very good. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. This is for coffee. Coffee, yeah? Yes. Ten shekel? Ten shekel, yes. Okay, I get this. About three dollars. That's a five, yeah. That's two five, yeah? Yes, two five. Thank you. <laughs> I probably write a blog once a week, so I document my journeys, my travels, and I want to share it with the world, really, and try and inspire people to believe in themselves and they can overcome whatever their challenges are. And I also add pictures I've taken. Well, originally I did it because I thought it would just be funny that someone see, seeing a blind person take photos. That's right, it's an extra way of sharing. Obviously, I can share my family and friends and stuff. It's the idea is to try and share it all with everyone. Thank you. Excuse me, excuse me. Take the hand. People. Don't leave him, don't leave him. Over here. OK. And Thank street. You. Thank you. A motorbike coming through, that's not very clever. Hello, looking for the station of the cross. There's a grill. 
this way, this way, here. This is the station at the cross? Yes, come back, 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 back. Okay. Turn to the left. Ah. And this is where he put his hands here. For this here. is where Christ... Here. Oh, here where he put his hand. Up, up, up. Yes, up to the right. Yes, exactly. Ah, okay. Ah, thank you. Welcome. Apparently, I'm at the one of the stages of the cross where Jesus put his hand on the wall and leant uh, against the wall. It's what a defined handprint. Very smooth, but also quite rigid, quite bumpy. It's a lovely texture. Right, this is some barrier, I presume. Hmm. Is this the way in? Hello? It's women's. Machine? Women's. Woman? Yeah, it's not men. Approaching the wall. The wall sort of separated male and female. A guy took me into the male section. And they took me up to the wall. Okay. Oh, yeah, there's all these notes in it. Massive blocks. Very smooth. The textures, the shapes of the wall, the bricks. It's his historical and spiritual point of view is worth visiting. It's only at the western wall. Next week, we'll continue following Tony on his travels as he crosses into the Palestinian territories to explore the holy town of Bethlehem. So join us for that if you can. And don't forget, you can keep up to date by following us on social media. All the details should be rolling across your screens right now. But until next time, from me and all the Travel Show team here in Maryland, it's goodbye. Goodbye.